So we count backwards 30 days, and that brings us to the altar somewhere around February the 20th. And then uh, to March the uh, 22nd, right here is the image. So what we've done, we qualified March the 21st. We call it, it's not on the Sabbath. Here's the Sabbath. This is the day after. It's not in the winter. Winter was over over here. It's not. It's Nisan on the tenth. We've hit it exactly. If the fling starts at the evening closing of this day right here, we're on Nisan on the tenth. Uh, it's before the Passover. Daniel's timeline. It fits uh, the day count and also fits 2013. All those things. Now, counting on forward from here, the, the uh, 1,260 days that the woman is fed in the wilderness and the two witnesses start their prophesying will begin here. 260 days later brings us to September the 2nd of 2016. There's our 40 to 5-day period right in here, the days after tribulation. Uh, look what falls in between here. These are the days immediately following tribulation. These just happen to be the unfulfilled feast of the Lord, which Yeshua has not fulfilled in a hundredfold measure yet. First, we have the Feast of Trumpets falls in there on October the 3rd. It falls right there. The Day of Atonement falls right here. I guess we've all heard, we've all heard of the last trump, and we've all heard of the Day of Atonement. And the Feast of Tabernacles, which you've already covered, that is the wedding feast. Now, the last trump of the Day of the Lord, the judgment, or the end of the 120th Jubilee year, and the wedding feast right here. Now, what about this vision of Revelation 12? Here is the sign. Or here's, here is the scripture that shows the sign. Revelation 12 says, And, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman, over the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head was a crown of twelve stars and she being the child uh, cried travaileth, travaileth in birth, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered and there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and the seven crowns upon his head and his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to, be ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was made to rule the nations with an iron rod. You notice she's got some kind of rod, eh? And her child was caught up into God and to his throne. Now in Mark, the Lord, the Lord himself says, uh, And if the kingdom shall be divided against itself, then cannot stand. Now that's an interesting comment right there. And let's turn to exactly what Daniel sees and what he's describing here. This is called the elliptic. This is what the heavenly bodies move across. And all the Maserat signs. This is like Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, uh, Leo is up here. This is the this is what they move across. Here's Virgo. It says the moon will be under her feet, like this. Said so they have a crown of twelve stars. Coma Bernice is well known to be a uh, it's, it's twelve stars, and it's well known to be a crown for her. Saturn. Now I know there's Saturn worship. There's evil Saturn worship, but whatever God created Saturn for, absolutely precedes and dominates whatever man has in his wickedness has created. So Saturn represents the man child, or represents Israel, and. Uh, and like I say, I know that there's a Saturn worship, and this I just can't stress enough that whatever God created things for proceeds and overrides anything else man has dreamed up. And here's the serpent. It's called Serpent's Caput. This serpent, this uh, constellation is very, very unique. It is the only constellation in the whole heavens that is divided among itself, but is still counted as one constellation. Here's serpent's caudia over here. That's the serpent's tail, and that means serpent's head. It's the only one in the whole heavens that's divided among itself. It's, but it still counts as one constellation. This sign appears over Jerusalem, March 2nd, 2013, at 5.58 a.m. That sign appears. Here's the actual, here's the dragon. 
here's Arcturus. This is the Arcturus uh, that uh, Jordan spoke about. It's in the Booties constellation. Notice that he carries, a, he's got an iron rod there and a sickle for harvest. This constellation, he's also called uh, the herdsman or the shepherd who keeps all the rest of the celestial beasts in line. Here's the actual star plat that came off of that. Uh, here's the Virgo. Here's the, the uh, serpent. There's a beast here that's holding the head and the tail back. And then here is uh, Arctur here's the Buddhist constellation, which the star Arcturus is in. So, we have fulfilled vision of Revelation 12 also. And it falls in March the 2nd right here. And it's right before they start to flee. So what we have so far, we have Daniel's timeline, we have the year, is confirmed. And it's a consistent, perfect match with the midst of the week, where it shows the February the altar will be shut down in 2013, and Revelation, the vision of Revelation 12 appears in 2013 in the image. Also, the actual three and a half year day count calculation to 2013. We have a perfect match here. Now we're moving on to the day and the hour. The day and the hour supposedly that no man knoweth. Now, all three of these are going to have to be consistent. This matches with this, and this matches with that, but now this has to tie into all of them. If it doesn't tie in, then none of this is right. None of it's right. It's got to tie in. The day and the hour. Who mainly uses the following quote? No man knoweth the day or the hour of the Lord's return. No, not even the angels in heaven. Well, is that even an accurate quote? Let's go to the scriptures of truth and see what it really says. First of all, it says, No man knoweth the day or the hour. Now let's see what the scriptures really say. In Luke, according to Luke 12, this is the Lord's words himself. He says, Ye hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky and the earth, but how is it that you do not discern this time? And the Lord, as the Lord, as the Lord said this Himself, He's very plain. He said, "Why in the world can't you figure this out?" Now think about it. Now, if all the clues to our Lord's return were never be meant to be understood, why did Yeshua and the prophets go to such length to give them? There's a multitude of them. If we're not supposed to understand them, wouldn't that be considered considered idle words? I mean, if all this much speaking is done about His return, and we don't know when it is. Wouldn't that be considered, considered idle words? And there's no idle words in the scriptures. What about Revelation? He said, And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angels to show unto his servants the things which must be shortly be done. And that's obviously that to Revelation, that's to those, that group, that generation on whom the ends of the earth will fall, which is us. Deuteronomy. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and our children forever that when we do all the words of this law. Here's, here's Yeshua speaking in John. He says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. And here's another one in John. And how be it when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, and he will show you things to come. Now, Paul, even in Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, he says, uh, But of the time of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. That means he can. If there's no need that he can write, that means he can. For ye, uh, for yourselves, know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Now, right down here, he says, But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. He says they're not in darkness. They know when it is. Ye are children of the light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. He even says that they know and that he could write to them about it, but they have no need because they already know themselves. Now, let's go to the verses that they use for no man knoweth the day or the hour. This is We're going to dissect this. Matthew 24, and these are all the Lord's words here. Matthew 24, 29 through 31. The Lord says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun and the moon shall be uh, 
the sun and the moon shall not give her light, and the, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall uh, powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven, and these, and then sign, and then shall the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds with heaven and with power and with great glory, and he shall send his angel with the great with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from four winds, from one end of the heaven to the other. That is obviously his return. There's no question about that. That's the return of the Lord right there. We're going to call that time frame number one. These verses, 29 through 31, this is his return. It says it's after tribulation. He says an angel sounds a trumpet. And there's also, no. we know that there's a feast of trumpets. Let's go to the next set of verses, the same chapter, 32 through 34. Yeshua said, Now learn the far a parable of the fig tree. He's changing subject. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When its branch is yet tender and put, put forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. He's, ta he's, got, he's talking about the fig tree parable here, which we know what date that is. We've got time frame number two. He's talking about, he's not talking about his return. He's talking about a starting point. We have time frame number two. The parable of the fig tree and that generation will not pass. And that we know that date. That We know that date exactly. That's November the 29th, 1947. Now, here he says that generation shall not pass. That generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. fulfilled. Let's go to the next set. 35 through 36, he said, But heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will not. But of that day knoweth no man, no, not the angels in heaven, but my Father only. He just got through saying that heaven and earth will pass away, but of that day... That particular day and hour that heaven and earth pass away, knoweth no man, no, not the angels. Now, if the angel is going to blow the trumpet up here on the Feast of Trumpets, obviously the angel knows when he's going to blow it. The angel sounds a trumpet up here. But this is a different day. The heaven and earth shall pass away, but of that day. What he's saying here says heaven and earth will pass, but he won't, he won't pass away. His words will not. Which is greater, the creator or the created? It's the creator. Heaven and earth will pass, but not him. So we have time frame number three here, when heaven and earth passing away. Time frame number three. Heaven and earth will pass away after the sometime after the thousand year reign. That day and hour is unknown. But now if the angel is going to sound the trumpet up here, the angel obviously knows when to sound the trumpet. So this they try to drag this verse, his return, down into this verse here. Confusing the two, saying that no man knoweth the day or the hour of the Lord's return. No, not even the angels. It didn't say that. It said the heaven and earth will pass away, but that day knoweth no man. Now let's. Now we go into the next verse. He says, "But as the days of Noah, so shall be the coming Son of Man." But he's just changed subject again. He's changed it back to his return again. Time frame, he's back to time frame number one. His return is in the days of Noah. Now let's look at this whole thing in the days of Noah. Uh, this is 34, I mean 37 through 42. But as the days of Noah were, so shall be the coming son of man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and knew not until the flood took them all away. Here's the famous line that they use. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord Lord doeth come. Now Yeshua is not talking about heaven and earth here. He's talking about the hour that the that your Lord comes. Not heaven and earth this time. He's talking about your Lord. And they use this. This is what's used to say no man knoweth the day or the hour. Well, instead, this rather than being a negative thing, this is a huge positive clue telling us when he is returned. If we'll recall back on the uh, on the moon phases, it says, Watch therefore you know not what hour your Lord doth come. Remember these moon phases when the two witnesses would be on the Temple of Mount and no man, no man knew the day or the hour that they would see the uh, new moon? 
They would be up there for as much as 48 hours looking for this sliver. No man knew the day or the hour. Well, it just so happens there is one of the Lord's feast falls on a new moon. And coincidentally enough, that, that feast is called the Feast of Trumpets or the Last Trump, when the dead in Christ shall rise first. That is the first fall feast. Now, let's go right into something else here that's pretty astonishing. And uh, this Feast of Trumpets we're looking at, which falls in the days immediately after tribulation, this is what he says again. We covered this a while ago, but I want to bring up this, this is a very interesting point here. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. Now, what, what could that be? It could be smoke from bombs or wars or, or who knows what. But there is one thing that does happen that uh, we do know of. There is a solar eclipse on September the 1st. Right there. There is a lunar eclipse that follows that on September the 16th. Right there. And after that, there is another solar eclipse that hits on October the 2nd. The day before tribulation, or the day before the Feast of Trumpets, we have three eclipses that happen within just a few days of each other. Solar feast, the solar, uh, the the Gentiles, what they call the Gentiles, our Gregorian calendar goes by solar. That a uh, solar feast is supposed to represent something ha happening to the Gentiles. Lunar. God's months and calendar goes by the lunar. This is is supposed to be something happening to Israel. And again, we got to have another solar eclipse that happens to something to to mankind or the Gentiles. Very interesting. I don't know if this uh, eclipses are what's referred to here, but I'm sure it's no coincidence that these things occur. They're signs. Now let's go on to our, in our fixed calendar, our solar-based calendar. The Feast of Trumpets is, cannot fall on Sunday, Wednesday, or Friday. But it can fall on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Now this is according to the way our fixed calendar lays out. Now if we're the tabernacle of the living God, doesn't it seem normal that things of our Father will be revealed in us if we just ask Him? I mean, He wants to dwell in us. Now let's plot these out. Sunday... No, it can't. No, the, the the feast of trumpets cannot fall on Sunday. It cannot fall on a Wednesday. It cannot fall on a Friday, and back to Sunday again. But it can fall on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Now, if there's supposed to be a 48-hour period that the feast of trumpets is going to hit on, what 48-hour period do you say? I only see one there. It's Monday to Tuesday. Now let's go to the October. 2016 calendar when this Feast of Trumpets is going to occur. Here's the dates. And we already determined back on a little earlier chart there that, uh, that October the 3rd, 2016 was the when the Feast of Trumpets falls in the year of that year. Which also matches exactly uh, what the how it works out. The 48-hour the period. And that's no coincidence either. This if this makes it just pretty plain right here. We're, all we're doing is counting the months, days of the month right here down to the 22nd. I only stopped at the 22nd because I've ran out of room here, but there's enough room to get the point across and get the message what I believe God wants to reveal here. In the beginning of the months, when the at the first of the month, the beginning of the months, when the, when the calendar was given to Moses, was on Nisan the one on the first day of Nisan right here. Now then, on the tenth day of the month, the lamb was inspected and brought in before the very first Passover. The Passover occurred on the fourteenth. The unleavened bread was for three days, and then the first fruits was on the first day of the week, and it finished out the first fruits. Now the Lord has has fulfilled all these. He was the lamb inspected. He rode into Jerusalem. Uh, the Passover, his death. Burial, unleavened bread, first fruits, his resurrection. He's fulfilled these. Now look at what's left on the seventh month, on the on the fall feast in the seventh month. That's quite astonishing how it lays out. Here's Shavuot. This is the day that uh, the Holy Ghost was given. This is also called Pentecost in the in the Christian churches. 
happened sometime later down a few months, a couple of months later. But now we're into the seventh month up here. On the first of the seventh month, we have the Feast of Trumpets. On the tenth, we have the Day of Atonement right here. And then the Feast of Tabernacles falls on the 15th through the 21st, and then there is a Holy Convocation on the eighth day. Can, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. I mean, this looks like a mirror image of each other. And if he fulfilled these first feasts when he was here the first time, it doesn't take much to figure out what he's going to fulfill on his return. Trumpets, the last trump, Day of Atonement was also Judgment. And Tabernacles is the wedding feast. That's, that's pretty plain. Now, just as a curious example, I put, I don't know what was on the back side of the Ten Commandments, but it, this is just as good a guess as any. As it does say they were written on both sides. One side could be the you know, all these commandments, statutes, and laws, and the other side could be his feast because he definitely declared his feast. And, and your Lord, my Lord, our Lord, fulfill these. These are yet to be fulfilled. Now, Daniel's timeline, 2013, fit, the midst of the week, fit, the day and the hour, that no man knoweth, happens to be the Feast of Trumpets, 2016, after the tribulation. We have a consistent, perfect match on all of this. All of this complements each other. None of it is contradictory. All the prophecy fell into place, all on its own. There was nothing forced in anywhere. Just like God plans it. If God plans it, if it's God's truth, everything falls into place. All we have to do is just stay out of the way and watch it happen. Now, the confirming witnesses we have, we have Daniel's timeline, the 70-year Shavuot, or 70 years. We have the evidence of the Jubilee years calculations, counting both backwards and forwards. We went back 200 years. We even back, went back to the year 333 B.C., all the way back to the second beast, which was Alexander the Great. We had the parable of the fig tree nation, which is 1947. The 47th commandment uh, of Israel going forth as a nation again. That's astonishing. That's the only country in the whole world that, that became a nation again and, and had their same capital as they had. Never happened before in history ever. We have the ancient times revealing the future, the press counting of, the three, of days in three and a half years. Using the Hebrew set, uh, the Hebrew calendar, that overlaying on our Gregorian calendar is astonishing that those things matched up like that. It's truly like a camel going through the eye of a needle. We have the the tenth of Nisan events, including the water miracles, uh, when the children brought in the lamb, the abomination, the abominable lamb they brought in, the lamb with two horns, the. Uh, Dried up the Red Sea was not on the tenth, but it was it was a correlation of these events that began with this. We have uh, the Jordan River drying up on the tenth month of Nisan. Yeshua rode in the tenth of Nisan, the lamb presented for inspection. We have the meaning of the Lord's feast, which you've covered pretty clearly. That the last feast, the last three feasts, the fall feast, have not been fulfilled yet in a hundredfold measure. We have the vision of Revelation 12 that happens in 2013. And we just have asking, believing God to reveal the truth, which he will. It's just knock and you shall receive. And then the confirmation of the 120th Jubilee year. We've had all these witnesses, all these witnesses, and all of these have complied with one another. Uh, let's look at all 70 Shavuot. Or look, we're going to look at all 70 years right now. Here's our prophetic baseline right here. Here's, we're going to lay out all 70 years from the commandment. Now, this is where a lot of folks miss it. It says the commandment went forth. So the commandment went forth in 1947. So the first Shavuot, or the first Feast of Weeks that would have, would have shown up would have been in 1948. We'll put 48 through here through the next for the 10 years. This thing in blue is one of the sabbatical years. If you'll remember back, we showed how to count sabbatical years. There's 10, there's 20 years, there's our first Jubilee year we found. It's 30 years, 40, 50, 60. There's all 70 Feast of Weeks for all 70 Shavuot. Here's our 119th Jubilee year. And here's the one that has been shown to be our 120th Jubilee years in 2017. 
Now, if we'll count these years, all beginning at uh, 47, if you wanted to count them, we could. There's 10, there's 20, there's 30, 40, 50, 60, 61, 62. Right there at the end of that, the 62 years, just like it shows up here, 2010, 2010 begins the seven-year period right here. And coincidentally, this uh, seventy, this seven-week period right here happens to be a complete full sabbatical year set. Year one, two, three, four, five, six, and the seventh year of the sabbatical year. And remember, that's the 49th year. And then the next year is the 50th year of the Jubilee. And this, like I said before, this uh, seven-year period, prophetic week, just also happens to be a full sabbatical year set before the Jubilee. Now, in the, and he says that he will confirm the covenant for the many in the midst of the week. He will cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease right there, right there in the midst, 2013. And here's where we are right now. As At the time this was being recorded, we're at 2005, even though uh, I have given this uh, to a few people way back in 2000. I just haven't felt like that it was time yet to bring it out, so it was, it's time to be brought out. And it's, we're not far away from from the uh, end of 62 years, as you can see. This date right here, this date right here is exactly where we're at. We're in the third year, one, two, three, past the fifth sabbatical of the 119th Jubilee year. In other words, the 119th, 119th Jubilee was here. We're in the one, two, three, four. Five sabbaticals have passed, and we're into the one, two, third year. So January of 2005 equals uh, the third year past the fifth sabbatical of the 119th Jubilee year. Now here's the whole here's the whole overlay the whole overlay of everything. Uh, November 1947, the 70 years began. Goes all the way to here to the 70th Shavuot in 2017, when the Millennium Rest is, is in the, in play. From 47, we have the 62 years, which begins the prophetic week. This is the prophetic week right here, the seven-year prophetic week. Here's the midst of the prof prophetic week. When the altar s shuts down, the 1260 days that the woman fled. Uh, starts. We have the seals, trumpets, and plagues, all that happening. We have the end of tribulation in the 45 days, which is the, uh, trib the days of tribulation immediately following, of uh, the days immediately following tribulation, which by no coincidence happens to have the Feast of Trumpets, the last trump, fall in there. The Day of Atonement, Judgment, and the 120th Jubilee is sounded right here.